So, there was a man born in 1929 on January 15th, and his name was Michael King. And his father's name was Michael King. And his father was a Baptist preacher, and he visited Germany, and he was so captivated by the legacy and by the contributions of Martin Luther that uh, brought change and brought education to girls for the first time and, and brought literacy, literacy rates just dramatically rose because of the Reformation. And this Michael King was so enamored by this Martin Luther that he changed his own name to Martin Luther King and he changed the name of his son to Martin Luther King Jr. And as they say, the rest is history. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We must decide whether those words will be firmly etched into the structure of our nation. That's right. Okay. So race is interesting, right, because it doesn't exist scientifically, uh, chromosomally, but it's everywhere. The way we delineate and define others based on their kind of outward appearance of pigmentation or other kind of physical attributes. So what's up with this? Well, I think it has to do with kind of, you could look at it kind of anthropologically, that humans are kind of wired to associate with people who are like them, with their own tribe and that we kind of fear the other uh, as the enemy. And so that's good if you're like on the Serengeti plane. It keeps you alive, right? When there's an enemy or where there's a, but it's not good when you're in a pluralistic society where you have to figure out a way and configure a way to do life together, to form a kind of community. So what is, what's going on in terms of race in America? Well, I mean, we obviously have this racial, line. We, first place we got racial guilt. And whenever people are guilty, bad things happen, or if they feel guilty or they feel ashamed. So you got like whites who feel guilty because of the kind of history and lineage of racism and they don't know what to do with that guilt. And you got, got blacks who feel, and Latinos who feel like ashamed because they're not white. And you have all these kind of layers and levels of guilt and shame. So there's a kind of psychological anxiety that people have around race. That's one kind of, that's one kind of thread or one kind of layer of what's going on uh, with the race question. The other thing, and I actually take a positive view, I actually think we're doing incredibly well. I mean, what nation in the world? On the day I was born, January 14, 1963, I wasn't born in the United States, but I got here as quickly as I could. I hope I haven't messed it up too much for you. I've tried to be, you know, a positive contributor to this great society. And I think this is the greatest country in the world because of the opportunities it gives. Why do you think immigrants are all trying to get to this country? Because it is, in many ways, the greatest experiment ever known in terms of what does it mean to build a nation of people together. So, but on the day I was born in Montego Bay, Jamaica, January 14, 1963, a governor was sworn in on the steps of the Alabama State Capitol in Montgomery, George Wallace. And in his inaugural speech, he says, segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. Before my 50th birthday, a president named, and I don't care if you agree with his politics or not, Barack Hussein Obama is re-elected president of the United States of America. That only happens here. And then add to that the coda that, uh, you know, eight years after his first election in 2008, we have a president who could not be more diametrically different than Barack Hussein Obama. And we have a peaceful transition of power. That only happens in the United States of America. That whole sweep only happens here. I take a really positive view. We've got work to do. And I think the reason that we are kind of experiencing at this time this kind of rise of racial anxiety is because we know we have work to do. And we know that we're better than this. And we know we've been called to be better than this. And we know that the kind of, uh, so I take a Kingian approach, right? You know, that we have to live up to the meaning of our founding documents that talk about all people, you know, having uh, these rights, these basic fundamental rights. And I think that's something that's uh, inherent in who we know we are called to be that gives us so much anxiety and is the cause of uh, some of the tension that we have. And of course, there's anxiety because of the shifting demographic. And what that has created is a, a community that's very anxious, a community that's very afraid. Um, but you know, if we look back at our history and see where we've kind of come, I think it gives us all of the reason possible to be just really confident of what lies ahead in the future.